Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today we're going to be starting the Jetpack Jorad tutorial series in Scratch. This is part one, and I'm going to show you guys the final project right here. So you can see we have our character, Barry. We can use the space to activate our jetpack and fly. We can collect coins. There are randomly located zappers, as you can see. And there are lasers and rockets as well. So here's a rocket. I have to dodge it. And if I get hit, then I go to this dying animation. And we can click the green flag to restart. And you can see that I can play again. And the game goes on until you die. And there's score as well, as you can see up here. All right, so in part one today, we're going to be working on the jetpack and making sure the gravity for our character is working. To start, let's create some new sprites. So let's click the trash here, paint a new sprite. Now, there's a link to all the art assets in the description below, so you can download all of them. We're going to drag in Barry Fly, double click. And if we delete the first costume, you can see we have this. We're going to set our size to about 50. And we're also going to make it go right here just to start off. So we're going to use a variable called player YV and we can keep this for all sprites. And we're going to set this to zero. Now player YV stands for player Y velocity, which means how fast is the Y position of the player changing. So when we start, we want it to be zero. But as you may guess, we want to apply a gravity force, which means that we have to constantly be decreasing player YV by one to bring it down. And now to actually make this work, we have to go into motion, drag in a change Y by, go into variables, and drag in player YV. And you can see that we start to fall. Now, since the gravity code is kind of complex, we're going to create a new block for ourselves to manage it all. So we're going to make a new block, call it gravity, and make sure you hit this run without screen refresh. All right, so the first thing we need to do is implement a ground. So we're going to paint a new sprite and upload a costume, ground, double click, and we need to go to x0, y negative 160, and keep our size the same. Now before we start, let's actually go to this position right here just so we have something to test with. And like I said, we're going to actually do a lot of our gravity code in the new block, so we can just add this here and then drag in this gravity block right here, and you can see it does the same thing. It'll fall. All right, so what we want to do is make it so that the player checks if they're touching the ground, and if they are, then don't move and set the player YV to zero. Otherwise, we can continue to move. So the way to do that is to go here and drag in a change Y by player YV, like we already have, then go into control, drag in an if, go into operators, drag in an and, and we're going to say if touching uh, sprite2, which is our ground, and go into operators, drag in a less than sign, and our player YV is less than zero. So if we're falling and we're touching the ground, then we want to um, set, first of all, set our player YV to zero so that we don't change anymore. But you also want to reverse this. So if we're touching the ground, then we want to go back up as this is going down. So we can duplicate this and just use this block, go into operators, drag in a minus, and flip the sign of player YV. So we can do that before. So now you can see that it falls and it sits on the ground. So now we're going to add some code so that we can use space to go up. And the way we want to do that is to go into events, drag in a when flag is clicked, go to control forever if. And you can imagine we're going to be if key space is pressed. Then we want to add a little bit of delay as we don't want the jetpack to start working immediately. So we're going to go wait 0.5 seconds or 0.05 is probably better. And then repeat until and you're going to drag in a not key space is pressed. Then change our player YV by two. So what this does is it waits for you to be holding the key space pressed for 0.05 seconds. And then while you continue to press space, it'll change your player YV by two. And since we're always changing by negative one, this will lead to a net increase of one, which means you'll actually go up. So you can see if I click space, I can go up. And I think it falls and goes up a little bit too fast for our game. So let's change this number to negative 0.5, uh, negative 0.5. 
and we will change this player YV and we can change it to one. So now it's a little bit better and you can see we have a little bit of delay, which is great. All right, the next thing we wanna do is add a ceiling or a roof. So you can see if I click space and I go all the way up, our player goes off the screen. So we're gonna add a new sprite, paint it, upload the costume again, all links are in the description below to the art. We're gonna find roof and we're gonna to go to X zero and Y 160. And let's just rename these sprites. So we'll call this berry, we'll call this ground, and we'll call this roof. And what we wanna do is um, go into our berry and use a similar code except for the roof. So we're gonna say if touching roof and player YV is greater than zero since we're going up to touch the roof, then change Y by negative player YV and set player YV to zero. It should be the same piece of code. So now you can see that if I go up, I hit the ceiling, and if I fall, I hit the uh, ground, and our physics are working. So now to start, let's set the player on the bottom at the left side of the screen. So what we can do is go here, or change this go to XY to negative 175 and negative 121. Those are the numbers that work well. And you can see that we start right here, and we can press space to go up, and if we let go, we fall, and yeah, our gravity is working. So that's where we're gonna leave part one. I hope you're excited for this series. Hopefully I'll see you all in part two, where we continue to build out the Jetpack Joyride game in Scratch. Peace.